So we start off in chapter five. At this point, you're in the third act of the game. You're on this militarized island where there's a lot of labs, uh, a lot of research stuff going on. The enemy types are Ganados and a lot of them are just, you know, um, just run at you. The atmosphere is less creepy, more action oriented. And then all of a sudden, you head into this area where there's signs pointing towards the operating room. The lighting at this point in the game is fantastic. Where each area is sort of punctuated by guards and random enemies popping out of the corners to attack you, making a lot of noise. There is just this weird, ominous sound. Uh, I guess that's the music for this section. Um, that's all you hear. So at this point you notice a fire hydrant that you could probably shoot at. Uh, good to know. Everything about this is just eerie. It's just creepy. You start seeing uh, sort of telltale signs of a hospital. You see hospital beds to the side, medicines and supplies, fire hydrant hoses. The windows are now boarded up. Kind of creepy. Uh, but all right, I'll continue on. That's the third sign pointing to the operating room. And it's at this section, my favorite part of the entire game begins. So the operating room has this weird, dense atmosphere. The way the door makes that noise is so unsettling after such a long amount of silence. You see in the distance what looks like a burn victim or zombie, you're not sure. find a keypad and in a very typical Resident Evil fashion it's a clever mini game puzzle that you have to solve in order to open the door. Now my anxiety is going because at this point I know that there's something behind me in that room and I don't want it to jump out and attack me. Again it's that weird door sound. <laughs> Oh, now this room looks really cheerful. You check on that door, it's locked. Something inside the room must be blocking the door. Oh well, I guess I'll continue on. You find a memo on to your left. Pick it up and it's Lewis's memo. What the memo entails is all these experiments that have been happening throughout the game. And they're just merely byproducts, these weird beings you're in, sort of encountering what the real aim was was to create something called regenerators the moment i read this i just had a chill down my spine because these things are human at one point they were human and have these parasites attached to them so they have a very high metabolism the memo reads and they can regenerate body parts and in order to kill them you need to find these invisible to the naked eye parasites on their body. Shoot them. Not looking too good for you, Leon. You find machine gun ammo, which is always a good sign for a battle that ensues. There's just something about the lighting and this failed experiment with this parasite sticking out of this poor guy. Just the creepiness. It just the tension is at its highest at this point. Of course, I'm not an idiot. I'm going to try and prepare and grab uh, what I think is uh, the best option to hold on to. A rapid-fire machine gun. This poor guy is carrying the final piece of the puzzle. The freezer card key. Oh, great.
grizzly and to one of the freakiest creatures. Ever. And this whole section is pretty gnarly and I absolutely adore it. I couldn't wait to get out of here, but the moment I did, you hear this, this eerie cackling breathing sound they make. And all I have to do is make a little bit of noise. There it is. There's something so eerie about the simplistic design. This sort of like burnt body look that it has. The fact that it just regenerates its wings. This, these massive teeth that sort of protrude out of its mouth. It's very unsettling. Those red eyes. I mean, it's such a simple looking creature. <laughs> if you ask me to draw it, it's just red eyes and massive teeth. Uh, they look like a sort of like a... a a burned up joker if you will uh but man there's just something unsettling about the length of the arms the way they walk the way they stride in and that breath that breathing noise is so freaky Splatter of blood and guts all over. Ah, uh, it's just so unsettling. It's just so disturbing. And now, we enter the best part of this whole puzzle. The freezer room. Semi-moving parasites. A lot of body bags. There's a lot of body bags here. It's in these like open moments where the game knows how to bring back that eerie, chilling, disturbing feeling that was so apparent in the first two Resident Evil games. The more I look at this creature, the more it freaks me out, which is kind of bizarre because you think once the element of surprise is taken away, that these things would sort of lose their scare factor, their charm, their appeal. It's just grotesque, it's simple, it's almost human, but it's entirely not. And looking at it frozen or suspended on meat hooks is another thing, but knowing how it breathes, how it walks, that's an entirely other feeling. And oh great, you get to turn off the uh, cryogenic freezer and sort of warm up the room. That's exactly what we needed to do. It's at the moment we take the infrared scope that the door's been locked. And your worst nightmares are realized. Thankfully, there's only one of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
I can't tell you how many nightmares I had the first time I played this section. These guys are disgusting to kill, disgusting to look at. They sound disgusting. They walk in a very uncomfortable, eerie manner and it's just quite possibly the greatest enemy design in the entire game, if not the series. And that's all I have to say for today. Thank you again for joining us. It's been a real pleasure, guys. Take care, and I'll see you later.